Welcome everybody to our live stream here on Lee Chess and Twitch. William Pascal, international master from the United States, living in Budapest, Hungary, hosting my stream here usually six days a week. This week we cut back a little bit due to a live tournament that I'm playing in. So today we're streaming two hours only, 10 to 12 CET. I'm usually going at 11, but um, again, schedule modified just for this week only to the 10 a.m. starts on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Usually we're 11 a.m. CET. But this is the only time I can spare now until 12 o'clock CET, so we're gonna take some challenges. Weird Wednesday, where we try to play unusual openings in five plus three through seven plus three challenges. Astrobay, good to see you in the house. As I try to get myself ready here. <clears throat> All right. So the last stream I, I started, again, this 10 a.m. start, not really good for me, but I started very not warmed up and lost some embarrassing game, <clears throat> at least one. So I want to play a, a warm-up game or two in the lobby, the lobby bar. All right, <clears throat> let's see. Almost no challenges out there. Three plus two. Three plus two casual. <clears throat> casual. Are you feeling casual? I'm supposed to play weird openings. So, we play the English, but let's make it weird. How can we make the English weird? Hard to do. A3. All right, Astro B, what's up, man? How are your chess pursuits going? Not E6. Now it's A3 versus the Indian defense. This move I don't I don't really love for black. Not a lot of time to annotate here. I'm just commentating. Technically annotating, I guess, would be written. Written commentary. This is verbal. This is commentary. Verbal commentary. All right, D4, C6. Why am I thinking so long? Good question. All right, we'll have to be a little conservative here in our approach, I think. It's A3, Semislav. Actually, not a really very uncommon line to see the A3 played there, whereabouts. Probably for the semi-slot player, this is a very like typical play position. <clears throat> I can play B4. That's That's gotta be kind of critical. Black actually would benefit by having the bishop on d6 because it would be able to play, they would be able to play bishop d6, queen e7 with additional pressure on the v-port. The v-port pawn, v-port. a6 doesn't really do anything. And we're going to roll them in the center. They seem complacent. You have to play a5. That's the entire point of black's position. The only counterplay now is a5. You don't do a5, you can't do anything. <clears throat> the one weak point of my setup is to try to undermine that. I can build up at, at leisure. <clears throat> Preempting a5, a preemptive. I wanna play e5 and attack on the king side, but I'm just sort of getting everything ready because I can take my time about this. Now they're ready to play e5. I guess they could play bishop f4 if you really want to. Might be best. I was kind of hoping for, you know what, I just missed e5, bishop takes h7 check. Just, does that work? Just like game over? This is actually not a bad move by black. Probably. Probably, maybe. Maybe it's bad. <clears throat> 
should black do here? I have an idea. Not really. I don't know. Not what I expected. Once again, black fails to find counterplay. Now they're going to have to go into a very strange formation. So they try f6. Which I think is dangerous. Not unsound. Where is unsound? Just send him an email. Where in the world is someone unsound? Yes. The only defenestration possible here. Unfortunately, there's not that much time to think. I wish there was more. I would try to enjoy this position a little bit more. <clears throat> I love when I hover the, the mouse over the... I have this thing for hovering my mouse over the... Uh... Where's that knight going? Actually, g7 now? Are you sure h6 was a good idea? Maybe you shouldn't have done that, because now knight g7 just drops a pawn. Probably not a really good idea for me to start right off the bat with the... With the, um... Oh my god, I have d5. Is that even good? How can d5 be bad? doesn't seem to be really thinking very deeply. They just sort of make moves. The crux of the matter is all along was to get some counterplay with a5. I don't know how much they would gain, but at least something. Access to the g5 square here. Black Knight has no squares, just gonna have to move the rook on e8. Free up a place. This is lost for black. Could get ugly. You might want to shield your eyes. This is PG 13. Violence. Let's see if I take right away. King g7, queen h4, check. Bishop moves, queen, it's not mate, is it? Well, it doesn't really have a good place to put that. <clears throat> That's mate. Up close and personal. So, black failed to play a5. Very important when White tries to fix the queen side in a semi Slav. Is anybody here? Don't be shy. Challenge me to 5 3 through 7 plus 3. Let's try to get a little bit of a longer game. This 3 plus 2 I was a bit rushed, especially when I'm not warmed up yet. That's annoying that that pops up. All right, now. Let's wait for something a little more appropriate. Five plus something. If we can get it. Three plus one, three plus zero, five plus zero. <clears throat> five plus zero is the same as the game I just played, essentially. I was hoping for five plus increment. Higa. Too strong. We need another warm up game. One more warm-up game. Come on, somebody send out a challenge at 5 plus 3. All right. I might have to... Nobody does 5 plus 3. 
5 plus 2 would be fine. Anything in that range. But the 3 plus 2 is a bit quick. I want to be able to think. Looks like we're just going to have to settle for 5 plus 0 or 3 plus 2 again. <clears throat> That's all anybody's playing. There's a 5 plus 3. 1300, but whatever. It's a game. All right. Sicilian. Siciliano. Last warm up game. Then we're going to get to some challenges. We just got a challenge from Huga. And we'll start there. This game should. All right, this is interesting. Already we have tactics. <clears throat> Queen a5 check. You know, is Queen a5 check worth it? It's just c3. White can play c3 in position's not that bad. What if I played knight f6, knight c3, queen a5? Doesn't do anything. I'm, I'm thinking too long on this, but it feels like there should be a trick here for black. Check c3. There's nothing there. All right, I don't see anything. Unfortunately, queen a5 check, knight c3, queen c5 would be good, but he has that. Now he just reverts to this annoying plan that everybody plays, taking on c6. <clears throat> it's not good for white, but it's incredibly like, kind of solid. It basically white gives away all their opening advantage by exchanging knights on c6 completely in exchange for making the game very boring. Black has a larger pawn island, so there's a theoretical advantage for black, but it's a very small one. I mean, this guy's 1300. Even getting this far at 1300 is pretty unbelievable. All right. Uber driver. 1300, he, he's been taught not to move the pawns. Clearly. Just pieces. I see that a lot. Sometimes I'm, I'm afraid they're using an engine or something when they start playing like that, where they don't touch their pawns at all, it's too disciplined for someone who's like 1300 to not create any weaknesses in their position. Again, no pawn moves. This is a little too disciplined for, for 1325, I would say. Pawns are, are, are the soul of chess, as Philidor said, but but their movement weakens your position irreparably, so they have to be played very, very carefully. I think for an absolute beginner, um, there's a pawn move, a slight weakening of white's position. Finally, <clears throat> he plays the pawn move to block my pawn, pawn move. 1300, I think this is an excellent start for someone who's supposed to be 1300 already. Way better than a normal 1300. With this move, he gives up his dark square bishop. Black has a tiny advantage. White's position is still very, very tough to penetrate. Like a turtle shell, all in the white squares. And we have dark square, complete dark square control. Black is better. I mean, if my opponent's rating was like 1700, I'd be like, all right, maybe. But 1300 on Lee Chess, that's like a thousand feet A, which means you just learned how to play in the last, you know, six months or something in most cases. And he does not even drop a single pawn. This is also a good move. Very logical. Played immediately. Not in love with bishop b7, but it would be nice to make that diagonal great again. Man, good 1300. 
another very solid move. This guy's like 1300 going on 2000 in the next six months, the way he's playing. Extremely disciplined and solid. Free what? Yeah, if you want to lose a piece, it's free. Um, free for the cost of one bishop. So you want to give up your dark square bishop? I don't really want to do that. It's the best piece on the board. I'm not playing bishop takes g3. The worst piece for the best piece. That's not a good exchange. Even if I if I gain a pawn, my advantage would probably go down. This bishop alone like controls the entire board. I can wait and, and gain material later. If he plays c4, I mean, it just plays into my hands. Though he may be able to just keep it blocked. If he plays c4, I think I'll just leave it. It is remarkable for a 1300, and the speed he's playing, too. It's a little bit tough to believe. I might have to trade my white square bishop, but bishop a6, bishop b7 may be necessary. <clears throat> this is a little too strong for his rating. I mean, it's not like it's a FIDE rating. It's like usually about a couple hundred points lower. Disappeared and came back there. He joined the game and left. He went black and then came back to green. Black and green again. Look at that. Disappearing, coming back. Don't always see that flickering. Maybe his connection's out. Now he's taking a long time. I didn't mean to play this guy for like 10 minutes. I didn't think it would be a difficult game. So I, I want to get to our friends and... And this was meant to just be a warm-up game. I thought it would take like 2 minutes to beat the 1300, but he ends up being actually quite good. Ironically, we'll go with the central pawns, I guess, finally. We've got to unleash. Unleash the beast now. Perhaps I had this previously. Probably on the last move, I could have not played rook f c8. Extremely strong position. Central pawns now out of control. But it's not a 1300. I mean, 1300s make mistakes and drop material. This guy didn't, didn't do anything. Yeah, the connection's really weird. Rarely see that blinking. It's too late to consult, consult the oracle. My man. I wouldn't trade this, this bishop for the world. I would have a trouble bringing myself to take his rook with it. One of his rooks, anyway. Another interesting thing is that he, he uses a very sort of consistent amount of time every move exactly the same amount of time every single move he plays never too much never that's not true though there was that one time when he sat there for a long time but I mean this is 5 plus 3 I keep thinking it was faster the last game was 3 plus 2 and I thought it was the same his queen has almost no squares but one is all he needs all right, might have a tactic here. Knight takes d5, bishop d5, 
if he reels that off on me, I'm going to be very paranoid. Knight d5, rook d5. What am I talking about? Knight d5, rook d5, bishop c4. Knight d5, bishop c5, bishop d5, rook d5, rook d5, bishop c4, rook d8, rook d2. I don't have rook d8 there. He probably has a tactic on d5. That might actually work. Now if I play it, do I lose? Is he going to do the tactic next? I mean, this move looks insane, but now he has the same tactic. At least we know he's not a computer. I think this probably works for white. And then he takes d5. Still remarkably resilient for 1300. This is crazy. I guess she went a pawn here. We win more than a pawn, win an exchange. Man, I don't know, something very tedious about this game. It's creeping me out. There goes a rook. I mean, yeah, the guy's weaker than me by a long shot, but really, 1,300? That's, that's kind of bizarre. All right, anyway. We had a challenge from, from DK guy. What happened to Huga? You switched places? All right. DK guy, we have to get masters in the first five minutes when we start the, the stream. It's important. Get me while I'm tired. And I just woke up. That game that game made me more sleepy than I was before I started the stream, I think. I'm not going to play 1300s anymore. Going to have to set a minimum. 1500 or something like that. I'm just kidding. All right. The 10 a.m. streams. Ask me, what is that? What did you do? The slaggy god mode, SG. You got sunglasses on me? DK guy is very strong. <clears throat> I'm having some trouble with this, this opponent. Does anybody think he had the tactic knight takes d5? Tactics must have been his weakness, and I, I didn't get any tactics in that game till the end. But strategically, he was stronger than 1350. He was like 1600. But probably his big weakness was tactics, and I just didn't have a chance to exploit it. If he can't see that tactic with knight takes d5 and the pin on the diagonal, then then you're not calculating much at all. It's a very elementary. Yesterday I played the English in my tournament game, and I did a bunch of prep, actually, for this position. Two different lines here, e3 and g3. And I didn't get a chance to use it, but anyway, I play the English a lot. It's one of my main openings, and and not getting to use it yesterday doesn't matter. I mean, I, it's good that the tournament sometimes forces me to to study my openings and and do some prep. I need some motivation. I'm kind of a procrastinator. So we did a little bit of English study yesterday. My opponent 
you know, it was really funny because I was sitting there. I played the English. I was prepared for the King's Indian or or an English. And what is this? And um, this might have been within the the realms of prep too. But just as I sat down and made my first move, my opponent came to the board. It just it went in my mind. All morning when I prepared during the game, I hadn't thought of it. But for the first time, it was like, she could play c6 because she plays the Slav. And it was it's funny how you almost had a sort of like second sense. Like, it was like a psychic thing. I, I felt that she was like thinking about c6 because I played c4. I'm like, what's the one thing she could do that I didn't prepare for? And as I sat there, I closed my eyes and I heard press the clock and I opened my eyes and looked down and there it was. I was like, yes, that's the one thing that I didn't prepare for. You know, isn't that weird? This position is supposed to be better for white. I guess black can probably force transmission to us to a Tarash. Actually, I'm thinking of a different position. All right, this is fine. It's just a Tarash. I guess I can do better than the standard position. Not better for white, more than the normal transposition. I was thinking of a different line with G6. I looked at yesterday instead of E6. So we just get a Tarash. DK guy, you're not related to, to our friend Alms. You have about the same ratings same toughness he's also been playing Tarish against me that's weird isn't that weird I mean it wasn't like you know she played c6 and then I imagined it was like when I when I thought I saw it was like the time when I thought about Bruce Willis and his picture like appeared in front of me in a hell energy commercial billboard it was like you start thinking is it the chicken or the egg you know, did I think that first or, or is it just a weird freaky coincidence? And, um, anyway, the long story short is that I got some prep. This is not really calmly played variation. probably study this at some point discriminate against things that are considered slightly a second rate by theory but sometimes that might be a better line if I take on e6 I vaguely remember some game Michael Road played that I watched with white you know I can try to exploit the white squares but it's not so simple I thought everybody knew lots of theory in the Tarash. So knight e6, it's interesting in some positions. If you play h6, bishop f4, bishop e6, I take it and play e4. The position is slightly different with my bishop on g5. I don't like it quite as much. I think I've had this on the stream. I even had one game where I was like worse somehow. Obviously, DK guy is not normally a Tarish player. By the way, I'm supposed to be playing unusual openings, and I completely forgot about it, guys. Maybe that's what DK guy is doing. He's playing an unusual opening he doesn't normally play. I'm sorry, I didn't even remember. Too busy trying to wake up. All right, this game, forget about it. Next game, we're going to start playing unusual stuff. I couldn't remember. This is still a warm-up game, technically. We'll bust out the weird openings. I did in the first game. I played c4 and a3.
But this is just a standard opening, unfortunately, from my perspective. For DK Guy, it may be something unusual. Controversial decision. Technically, with isolated pawn, you shouldn't really want to trade trade exchanging the pieces off. Bishop c5 may, may benefit white ultimately. DK guy respects the structure. He said he hates isolated pawns. Unfortunately, isolated pawns are like an everyday occurrence. Slightly better for white. He's amazingly tough, though. So, weird openings begin next game. I've got challenges from Bluminator, Elton John, and Marwa. Alright, Elton John has to change it to non rated. Am I threatening to win a pawn? Not even. Not even. Bishop f6, bishop f6. We're still not threatening to win a pawn. Even then, it's like a draw. Man, dude. How can you be this solid? You misplayed the Tarash and you're still almost equal. It's unbelievable. You just play like a third rate Tarash. And it's still impossible to get an advantage with white. How is that? How does that work exactly? I think I'll play like the third worst move on. I move 10 for black. It's probably worse than that. Like bishop e6. Probably like the sixth best move. And I still have no way to get an advantage. Maybe rook d2? Not creating any weaknesses in my position. Check him out with knight h7. At first I was convinced he doesn't play the towerish, but this move is, is kind of actually a rather standard towerish maneuver. Position is far too complicated to figure out. In in thirty second chess. Incredible. B5. Presence of mind.
very tough end game. A little bit reminiscent of a game I had myself recently. Looks good for white. I think there he should have played a slightly different move. Anyway, there's no time to really discuss this in detail. I think he's lost. Very tough. Probably black was, was hanging on but would last in the time pressure. Not an easy position to play. I think the rooking game was very, very tough to hold. Um, when you exchange rooks on c1, I felt like that wasn't absolutely necessary. Maybe you should have tried to maintain the file and go into the minor piece ending, I don't know. Like rook c8, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, rook c1, rook takes c1, knight takes c1. I have a feeling the minor piece in game should be a draw. It gave me the file there, which was kind of a significant advantage. All right, so Bluminator and Morwa. These guys are not subscribers. No. E6 on move two. It was C4, Knight F6, Knight C3. Oh, yeah, I'll play E4 in the floor making S variation. Yeah, I like E4. I'm supposed to play weird openings. Blueninator, not Blueminator. Blueninator. Yeah, I like I like that. That's probably my favorite. Marwa's never a sub. He's just a friend of ours, and uh, he doesn't subscribe. I don't think he's around enough that it would be worth it. Maybe watching the stream, but but I've worked with him, treated him like a sub, basically. He gets a sub level of, of respect. All right, I'm supposed to play weird openings and I still didn't do it yet. Keep getting distracted. So let's try something here. How about E4 now? What can we do? It's unusual. I keep getting these amorphous openings. Let's try this. Your reverse martial variation. It's not really a Grunfeld because black hasn't played knight c6 yet, so he can take and play knight takes an e5. And I don't know what you call that. Now it's just a reverse Grunfeld. <sighs> Can't play anything unusual here. Just bad moves. Back to the drawing board is right. I can play the best move or no move at all. <laughs> Bad move or good move. <sighs> Meant to play, yeah, D takes C5. I mean, it's not an unusual move. It's just a bad move. I mean, it just gives up the center for nothing. And I think it's just, just a blunder, practically. It's like a Queen's Gambit accepted with G6, but a very bad version of it. If I take here on C5. I think it's just a mistake. I mean, I don't think it's unusual move, an unusual opening or something. I don't want to just blatantly play bad moves to get out of book. All right, so I think I looked at this yesterday. Did I look at this yesterday? C4, D takes C4, what's up with that? If I play C4, D takes C4. Now we can try to take on C5 and it's interesting. Topalov would play like E5 here. Just forget about G6. Um, okay, so we got a kind of pawn grab 
style position. Although I can play c4. Selector Slav style thing with like c3 is possible. C3, I mean c4, d4 is my concern. You know what's interesting? c4, d4, b4. C4, D4, B4. Let's try it. Something different. He doesn't have to play D4. D4 may be too aggressive. It may be a mistake. Of course, black can play D takes C4. Or just castle. D4, I guess, is, is asking too much from Santa Claus for Christmas. It would be the move I'm most afraid of. But I don't know anything about this opponent. 1400 bullet. That doesn't count playing not a lot of games. Okay, we've got 800 Blitz games. That's consistent. So now, if knight c3, d4 might start to be really problematic. So we have a, a bit of a problem there. I don't know what to play here. Knight c3, d4 isn't great. Maybe it is good though. Knight c3, d4, knight b5. And then if e5, knight d6. We'll go for it. Again, d takes c4 leads to symmetry, and it's probably playable. Do we transpose to a normal King's Indian, Fianchetto, like d c4, queen a4? d c4, queen a4, bishop e6, or d c4, queen a4, queen a5? Roman GG, I really like recommended playing that stuff. I was like, dude, I hate these positions. It's like totally symmetrical. There are only like one or two moves either side can play. You know, it's it's like not interesting at all. D takes C4, but maybe the best move for black. Very complicated though. D4, knight B5, E5, knight D6 with a knight sunk in on the sixth rank. I would have compensation for his space advantage with the central pawns. Still black might be okay there. Anyway, next game we're going to really get to some, some unusual openings. Against Marwa and LVN. Jim, thank you for the donation. How's my tournament been so far? Interesting. Um, I had a couple of relatively short draws. Now black just looks like they, they really went over the edge with queen a5 I and mean, this is extremely dangerous probably just bad for black <clears throat> my tournament is isn't great but it's not bad i have five draws and it's slightly disappointing but the good news is that all of the bottom feeders are still yet to come so all four of the last place runners are my next four opponents i played all the, the players who are performing better so we got to start racking in some wins in the next four games. But the good news is also that I'm playing better. Um, it seems like I'm playing progressively better every game. Considering how little I've played the last, the last year and two, yeah, the last year or two, and particularly over the last ten years. I mean, it's not a wonder if I play better when I play more. Actually, the best I ever played was when I was playing extremely actively. You could almost, you could almost um, draw a direct parallel between my my rating and and how much I played. Probably in like two thousand, in the period when my rating was was its highest, between like two thousand one and two thousand three, I was probably more active than any other time. Well, I used to have GM aspirations, but I'm. I mean, I, I'm not a professional chess player by any stretch, and and I really haven't played. It's it's kind of late in the game to to seriously call it having GM aspirations. I should have had GM aspirations like ten years ago. I've let my rating drop. Didn't really care that much about my elo. So, but, you know, I was thinking about it. I mean, if I could start playing again, 
it's still not out of the question completely. I, again, I make the argument that I don't think that age is the hindrance. I think that, you know, commitments, what level of how many commitments you have, responsibilities. I'm still young enough that I could do it, but the real question is, can you do it? Because you have the time, you have the... I don't have any GM norms, no. My best chance is the world senior, as I jokingly talk about on a regular basis. No, I mean, it's late in the game. I should have been seriously pursuing GM like 10 years ago. I sort of half tried. But again, I'm not going to regret doing other things. Well, the shame in it was that I was like not that far from 2,500. I was probably around 2,470 unofficially. And, and I kind of took it for granted. I was just like, oh, whatever, you know, I'll just, I didn't try to protect my ELO because I didn't really think I would lose it. But circumstances beyond my control, well, somewhat beyond my control. So I should have, if I had been very protective of my rating, like 15 years ago, I probably could have just, you know, nurtured it barely up to 2,500. No, I was like 2470 in mid tournament at one point. My highest official is 2463. But they go by, if you want to try to claim a title, they go by whatever you were like at any point in one tournament. Like I think I was around 2470 in this tournament before I started losing all my rating points. Approximately. It doesn't matter though. I mean, it doesn't matter if I was 2499. Or 24, 2401. If you don't make it to 2500, although they do make exceptions, they'll make exceptions if you're like 2499, actually. If you're just missing by a tiny, tiny margin, it's up to the discretion of the rating committee or whatever. So I think if you have three good norms and you're 2498 or something, they'll probably give you the title. Although I don't know, you know, I don't know how how liberal they are but in my case the point was that i if i had been careful i could have probably if i had cared about my rating a lot i probably could have carefully chosen every every single tournament and but i didn't care that much yeah it's interesting i never suspected that i used that i played a cheater like but I haven't been that active in this in this era now when there are a lot more realistic threats of people using computers and stuff. My opponent is down a piece. Um, I never suspected any of my over the board players, opponents of cheating. I mean, it's possible I'm forgetting something Knight c3, rook d7. Seriously? Setting me up? Blue Nanator? He's trying even harder now that he's down a piece. I guess he plays a lot of bullet or something. I don't know. I would just resign here with black. He's got one pawn for a piece. I was thinking he had two. Um. Moi, okay, weird openings. Actually, LVN, I've got to play first because he's a subscriber. And then we'll go to Morwa and Heroku. 
So unusual openings is supposed to be the theme today. I'm a little bit late in realizing it. Let's play the, the Dunst opening. Titles are awarded by the International Chess Federation, FIDE, based on performances and ratings. It's a very complicated process, difficult to explain in one paragraph or less. Specifically over the board tournaments. So knight c3, e5, um, let's try this. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Not really thinking well today, especially at 10 a.m. I'm mean, horrible. This drops a pawn. That's a gambit. This is similar to that crazy Petrov gambit we had the other day. Was that you, LVN? That was you, right? So, but I think this might be better for me. The Petrov leads to an open... Well, maybe it's pretty much the same thing. I mean, slightly different, but more or less the same type of gambit. It's a bullet chess player's dream, I guess. This is what you do. You do these full-on pawn sacks, unsound one pawn sacrifices for a kind of murky compensation. Interesting. That's your job. Yeah. He's, he's the expert of, of dubious sort of semi-sound gambits. Very appropriate, though, for today's stream. Knight B1. Well, it's a good suggestion, you have a driver, but illegal. Yeah, I don't love this. Again, he has compensation with an outrageous pawn sacrifice. Not thinking clearly. Yeah, I know all about it. I'm getting a lot of exercise, honestly, walking to the Budapest castle every day. There's like this huge set of stairs I have to go up. So the blood and exercise, blood flow, I'm getting a good workout. That's been good for my brain. Um, man, <laughs> this is really irritating. You know what? I really regret that I didn't play bishop g5. Yeah. Stretching is good. I should I should do like yoga classes or something. Bob would love to debate this topic. The virtues of yoga classes. How about takes and C3 now? Luck is definite compensation. How does this even happen? Then he takes e5, just giving me a whole pawn. Then I don't exchange on c3, so he can't bother me. And then, yeah. This the stupid knight on c3. My first reaction was probably better to play e3 in this position, rather than to commit to d4. A little more flexible. Bishop e6, though. I guess I was mostly concerned about bishop g4. I mean, clearly that's a little more aggressive. So anyway, I had an interesting game yesterday with... I, Jim was right. The girl that I played yesterday is younger than I thought. She's only 16. Um, I thought she was 17. But anyway, she could be 17 or 18. I can't tell. Anyway, she's the, the world number one player under age 16 because like she won't be 16 till next week or something she's actually ranked first in the world for girls under 17 under 16 until next week but we had an interesting game yesterday i don't think ever in my life i castled queenside in a karakhan panov 
And I didn't go to the game thinking, I'm going to Castle Queenside today, you know. But I had an opportunity to kind of avoid her preparation, which she surprised me in the opening. And um, I'm just wondering, does anybody out there play either side of the Karo Khan, Pana Bafane? And have you ever seen a game where White Castle Queenside in a Karo Khan, Pana Bafane system? Because I'm like racking my brains to think like, in the years, in the 30 plus years I've played chess, I've played both sides of the Karo Khan. I don't think I've ever seen a Karo Khan Panabafnik where like White Castle Queen side. I mean, it's like kind of insane. Sort of funny. You leave, you know, you leave home after preparing for an hour and the last thing you think, I'm going to go Castle and Queen side today with White. All right, what am I doing here? Seriously. Jeez. Knight takes e4, pawn takes e4, knight g5, bishop d2, queen d2, queen d4, knight e4, queen d2, knight e2. This is kind of a funny variation. He could have gotten the pawn back with bishop g4. Well, I mean, I was thinking like that, but not really, because I can always like take with a pawn on g4. I mean, on f3, you know, if he takes bishop takes g4, that went through my brain too, but just quickly I was thinking, okay, bishop takes, bishop takes. It's possible I'll have a recapture with the pawn on f3, dk guy, and, and maybe that will buy the tempo not to lose a pawn. At 16, they're, they're all grandmothers in some countries. I think they're going to say grandmasters. Um... This one is not. I was impressed. She made this insanely intuitive, brilliant pawn sack. Like, the moment that she sensed there was incredible danger for her. Like, most players would not have had the cojones to do what she did. But, like, she went into, like, alert you know, I've got to do something before something bad happens, like, immediately. And I was like, oh, my God. So she's she's talented. So here I was thinking knight takes e4. We have um, various end games though. Queen d4, knight d4, knight d6. Queen d4, knight d4, knight d6, knight d2, check, king h1, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes e4. Better structure. Slightly better for white. I kind of like that. Let's just keep it simple. The other thing about my opponent yesterday, after I studied like all of her games from the last two years, no, no one example of the Karo Khan. And she just completely took it in stride when I forced her to transpose to a Karo Khan. I mean, I was thinking she'd be completely unprepared. Ended up playing. I had to reinvent the wheel over the board, like trying to figure out what was already known theory. It was a good game, but I'm playing better every day, literally. Against Hochotnik on Sunday, I played pretty well. Yesterday against Frolov, I mean, I played the strongest three players I've played, like, since the beginning of the year, all in a row. Ukhatnik on Sunday, Frolov on Monday, and now the girl yesterday, all of which are like 2,400 plus strength players. And I'm playing better every day, literally. LVN navigating like a genius to a drawable position. But this, this girl I played yesterday, I mean, she's been playing like scholastic tournaments, I guess, for six or seven years, at the highest level. So she's not, she's like a veteran almost. And game technique is excellent. <clears throat> All right, here I have um, to watch 93. Rook d7, 93, it's not a problem. 
Maybe it's a problem. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. I was clearly better, though, if I had been a little more patient in the end game yesterday. Actually, also against Lukhotnik. If I had been more patient against Lukhotnik, I, I could have won, maybe. But I didn't see. I didn't take the time to see. Very, very small chance. You know, you set out thinking that the draw is enough. Yesterday was a sharp game. I'm impressed by LVN, despite the fact that I somehow have four points. I'm not sure the last move was good, though. This C6, 96. Okay, but it's not easy for Black to play this without making some sort of concession. <sighs> Another trick. I know, Jim, like taking the e6 pawn. But, I mean, honestly, that's computer chess. I can't, you know, I can't be a computer. That's exceedingly dangerous. It's easy, like, retrospect to look and say, oh, you could have done this, like, queen takes e6 check and whatever. I mean, obviously, I looked at it, but it looked, it looked like it was beyond my capability, honestly. Very, very dangerous continuation. Um, but anyway, I'm more interested in the end. You know, I mean, I think I could have ground her down in the end game, and I settled for the wrong line. There should be a way to play the end game for a win. Yeah. The game would go berserk, of course. I'm talking about yesterday, too. But, um... I was terrified to do that. Jim has the advantage of having seen my game from yesterday because I have it in a study. It just seems like a stupid move by me. I'm trying to give Black Zero counterplay. But, um, that's the thing. We have to be like within. The limits of human play. I don't mind tactics to some degree, but I, I'm not going to play into a position where it's like spiraling out of control and I have no idea what's going on. You know, I mean, that's that's probably not my like, type of situation. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, speaking of spiraling out of control... I have to allow Black a little bit of counterplay here, for lack of a better option. No. LVM missed. G6, complicating the game. Or even Rook D8, you know, for that matter. Probably Black's losing. Well, I don't want to, like... Yesterday, my wife cautioned me to be not to be overconfident because the last four opponents are are looking really, really juicy. But frankly, I think my bigger problem is not being confident enough. I think a lack of confidence has been really prevalent in my in my play. Um, You still just keep hanging in there. Don't play knight c6 no matter what you do. So, my last four opponents are all the bottom feeders. Not by rating, but by 
performance in the tournament. We got to get some wins. Of course, you can't be overconfident, too. Never talk to your wife. Don't have a wife. Too late for that. All right. She's not listening to the stream. Morwa Hiroku Bon Atrophy Chupa Chupa Chips. Chupa seems to have some kind of weird meaning in, in like the Hungarian Central European area. I don't really understand what it means. Chupa is Slo Slovenian, which is close. Morwa. So I've got to play unusual openings. Tricks are for kids. Now, what are we going to do against the Morwa? He's fast. He's tough. His opening is not, not a strong point. But let's try something different. Delayed birds opening. Well, that's not going to happen. So, Karo Khan. Oh no. The decelerated advanced Karo Khan. But it's not really because he hasn't played D5 yet. F3. Kind of hard to not play F3. I want to kill that center. Kill the center. <clears throat> but now what do we do? C4 is interesting. Tempo down. Too much time spent here. Counterattacking the center. Bishop f4, not not my thing. Particularly here. Yeah, actually, I have to be very careful about my dark squares having played bishop f4. I understand what you mean by bishop f4. Maybe without f3. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can play that, of course. It's, it's logical to go here. It's a Karo Khan. Why not? I despise Bishop F4. No, not really despise. Just this piece is developed from its original square. I don't know. Doesn't need to develop necessarily. Very logical play from both sides here. It's some sort of yeah, Karo kind of reversed. It's the logical pronouncement all right so things get interesting now i take on d5 you just take back this looks like a chigorin basically a chigorin do i have any tricks though cd5 knight d4 queen a4 check bishop d7 queen d1 cd5 so he's probably going to take if i take on d5 like cd5 Queen d5. And that doesn't really benefit me in any way. I have to reinforce my center. Now, I guess bishop d2, what are you going to do? And you got to break this pin. So, very consequent play. Black has an interesting game. Maybe black is better. Doesn't seem fair. What did I do wrong? Like, life is not fair. CD5, Knight D5 is a problem. I don't know, I have to move my queen again, it looks like. 
He's got two minutes more than me. He's outstripping me in development with black. C3, F3? He played E5, E4. Are you kidding me? He spent two moves on this pawn advance. What does he have all day? He developed no pieces with that with that hollow e5 e4. That's like saying the French advance is a good line. Uber driver. I mean, all due respect to Nimzovich, I don't think the French advance is like critical. Kasparov would play the French every game if everyone played the advanced variation against them. It's like, who is Kasparov? <laughs> what is it, 2020? I'm still making Kasparov references. I have to think for Castle and Queen's side, it seems. That, that, may, be just, that may be just bad. I don't know what other options I really have here. This looks crazy. Do I have any sort of tactic or justification for this? He has very good control of the white squares. And what can I say? My king is not really as safe as his. Black must be better. e4, e6, e5, knight c6. <laughs> Kasparov is a thing of the past. But I'm just saying, you know, here's one of the best players in history. And one of, I'm not going to debate. Carlson Fisher, you know. Kasparov, who's the best player of all time. But if the guy said that the advanced variation sucks for white, he's probably right. You know, I mean, it's a system, but it's not the best. So D5, do I have that? Oh, that's just evil. It doesn't really work. It's just like fake, fake news. G4 also not the best. But anyway, it's interesting pawn sack. Practical decision. How about my other pieces? Are they allowed to play? <sighs> yeah, that has a name, right? Well, that sort of trap with bishop takes f2. Oh, I missed this move. Oops. Oh, well, things could be worse. See... Marois sacrifices a little bit here and there for speed. 
but he's still better. Seems like an outrageously strong player, doesn't he? I haven't played him in a long time. His score wasn't going too well in the last games. It's been like two months since I played him on the stream. He's out for revenge, apparently. Never did get to develop my bishop. Never did get to develop my bishop. Never did get to develop my bishop. I'm only down a pawn. Oh, finally, something falls here. Yeah, it's over. Almost over. A bad feeling about this. I saw that. Yep. Wow, check this game out. Just crushed me like a dog. Using half the time that I have. And he's rated 2,000 feet A. Every move is the best and best move by the engine. This is the first deviation from best move. It's the second best move according to Stockfish. And this is another deviation. This was definitely suspicious. Bishop A5 doesn't look good. Almost every move is engine. He basically played like a perfect game with two inaccuracies or something. If he wasn't my friend, I would say the game was suspicious. 11 cent upon loss, one inaccuracy. It's a little over the top. But he has 2300 on the chess. I'll trust him on that. Hiroku. All right, Hiroku. That's like the best game he ever played against me. 11 sent upon loss with one inaccuracy. I haven't played him in two months. And he did it all using just like a minute and a half on the clock. That's powerful. I would say he's like 2300 feet A. Playing like that. I'm supposed to play something unusual. <sighs> I was upset by the last game. Let's gambit a pawn here. Just for fun. Oh, he just didn't care. Oh my god. <laughs> he didn't take it. This this was for you, LVN. I was going to play knight takes e4, knight c3, knight takes c3, d takes c. A sort of dubious pawn sack. But he just ignores it with d5. Yeah, I'd be proud if I could play. If I could, play. I wish I could play 11 cent pawn loss games with, with just using two minutes. I don't think even I can do that very consistently. This transposes to, to a variation of the floor meekness, though. The last game with Morwell. He made one in accuracy. Only. I think this is book. Whoops. Actually, DK guy was just asking if I would play the floor meekness English. That's what this is by transposition. Yeah, I think that Marwa's game, except for Bishop A5, was, was almost perfect moves. 
Bishop F A five was kind of like a cheapo trying to set up knight b four. The engine wouldn't play that. But other than that, it was perfect. I wasn't expecting to get assaulted like that. He's fast, but usually he makes some mistakes. No, we know what the Santa Pond loss is. Jim didn't know who we were, what game we were talking about, I guess. So this this is, I think, a weird square. Um, also, it happens a lot of the Nimzovic defense. Obviously, Aliakin. It's almost always badly placed there, but I understand that here it's logical. The bishop can come out. You get, you get developed. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to play an 11 Santa Pond loss game in, in an over-the-board game let alone play it in, in two minutes, like Bullet. Not a lot of people can play that well in such a fast time control. It's, it's hard enough to do it in a long game. wonder if I could sack a pawn here. So honestly, I just don't feel like developing his pieces for him. Maybe I can... I'm going to have to play like bishop e4, check, bishop d2, cd, knight e2, bishop e4, check, bishop d2. Now the problem is knight c4, so this probably is no good. Heroku also plays really well for the rating. The simul game was like the last one, wasn't it? My last simul? One of my last simul games. That was the draw. He was a pawn up at the end to hold a draw. Yeah, I mean, I could do anything. What I did was bad. F3 isn't something I like to do normally. I shouldn't play F3. I thought because I'm white and I'm a tempo ahead, I could get away with F3. But it's not really that good. It's too risky. But, you know, you're white and you're a tempo up and you want to try to do something more aggressive. I disagree with Morwas playing, you know, e4, but I don't think that it's good. Black's a tempo down in an already, it is a Karo Khan advance variation, not a French advance, but I still don't like it. I think it's overextending. This is a bad move, I think. Why not take the pawn? Is there something that I'm missing? You should take the pawn, and then you have like bishop check. I was looking at cd4, knight e2, bishop e4 check, and maybe I have to play king f1. Now my e5 pawn will be weak. Bishop e6 looks very, very routine. Of course, there's no other place to put the bishop. Maybe truthfully, I should just take on c5. I mean, it's not that big a deal. Particularly with, with the bishop having no retreat square back on that diagonal. Probably should have done this like immediately. I should have just taken on c5 last move instead of playing bishop d3. Do you think? Take c5, bishop c5, then bishop d3. It's probably fine. Bishop h7, check. Let's see, check, king, king g6. Queen d3, check, bishop f5, queen g3. Oh well. All for the sake of research. Everyone here is good. So I blundered, and you counter blundered. I psychologically tricked him. This doesn't work because, of course, he has like bishop f five, king g eight. You just play king g eight here, and you're you're clearly better, aren't you? Okay, I have queen d three, and if g six and d six, yeah, it's an unusual position. Maybe that's a draw though. I just have a draw. K 
King g8, queen d3, g6, knight e6. Takes, queen takes g6, check, king h8. I mean, can I really play for a win in that position? Bishop h7 has to be a mistake. I mean, this has to be a mistake. Okay, the game's hardly over, but I mean, it's really just starting. But I was very concerned that this is just completely unsound. Apparently it's not. He also has f5. I wouldn't recommend that. So king h7 might be better. GM classical games have like 7 CPL. LVN, like, do you know how often that happens? Like 1 in, one in 50 games. I mean, the real boring, like, 20 move draws where they didn't leave theory. Yeah. But I mean, if the players actually had to start thinking for themselves, I mean, half of those GM games you're talking about, they're just repeating moves they memorized, like, before the game started. So we have to dismiss that. And in the more like simplified variations, of course, it's possible. But this looks very dangerous. Um, I mean, I just played the game the day before yesterday. It was. The first new move was played on move 20. And if we agree to a draw there, we have like six cent upon loss <laughs> with no inaccuracies. I mean, but it's not that common. I mean, in a real battle where both players are on their own and, and it's complicated, I think the average Grandmaster game is gonna be like you know, 20 cent upon loss or maybe in the, in the teens or something. You're not gonna see the seven pawn Send, send upon loss, seven, send upon loss, very often in a real battle, unless it's Magnus, and even then, it'd probably be higher. All right, mate, but let's just, just to prove a point, um, man, this is just incorrect. It's not incorrect, it's incorrect, yeah. The computer bought it for a minute. Yeah, the problem is this, knight g5 check, king here. Queen h5 fails because of bishop f5. So you have to play queen d3 or queen c2. And then it's g6. I guess rook e8 is, I didn't realize rook e8. Rook e8, queen h7, king f8. Oh crap, that's complicated. What is happening here? Of course I analyzed this variation. Check out the computer now. King h1. Now if somebody plays that against me, I'm, I'm emailing Lee Chess and telling them that's an engine. If you find this move, you are a computer. I think I would have thought I was lost here, but Stockfish says I have two moves, then I'm not worse. Anyways, it's complicated, but it's incorrect to sacrifice on h7. So the other line was, was there. This is lost apparently. King g8, I thought he could maybe just play g6. Is it that bad? Oh, you have another move too, knight e5. Wow. So that's possible as well. I thought this was just I have to take the draw by, by repetition. Not clear. But I have no development. Now how am I going to get another piece in the vicinity? Maybe bishop g5. All right, bone atrophy, chupa chips, and my toe guy. My toe guy? My two guy, do you have 100 games? No. All right, we're not going to play them. You really, I, I want people to have an established account if they're going to challenge me. LVN is a, is a subscriber. Wait, we just played. All right, you're on non-subscriber. You're like Arsenal fan. If you try to play a second game, you're counted as a non-subscriber. You have to wait in, in line like everyone else. Yeah. No, I mean, I might have time for three games. If no other subscribers come, I'll play LVN. Okay, anyway, somebody left. No, Imre is a subscriber. Bone Atrophy. Thank you for the, the donation earlier. I didn't even, did I miss a donation from Zen Chess? No, that was from before. All right. 
Thank you for the donation from Jim. Taking the lead with 506. Sledgy Evergreen game. <laughs> yeah. My first game against Marwa was Evergreen. Bone Atrophy's not here? Where are you, dude? Usually he's he's here. Look at all those bunnies. I'm in the mood for bunny. I don't know. I think he like got disconnected, I guess. What is today? Wednesday? Our next stream will be same same station Friday morning. 10 a.m. All right, Gladys Troll is here. Gladys, how are you? We seem to have lost bone atrophy. I am um, starting a new game here. Maybe it's just me. Nobody wants to move. I guess Imre didn't expect me to accept his challenge. See, this happens sometimes. There's like a domino effect. One player sees like he's second or third in the list and goes away from the computer. And then when the first player I was playing doesn't show up, they're not ready yet. So here we are. Our last opponent wasn't ready. Now this player isn't ready. I'm ready to kill some bunnies. Frozen by the Joker. Feel like bashing bunnies. All right, man, this is another one. I'm not gonna sit here and waste our time. We don't have that much time. Does Chupa have enough games? I had the feeling they do, okay. Let's play Chupa and then those other unreliable characters can re-challenge me. All right, we'll start with E4 and try to play legitimately unusual opening. Uh, we wanted Knight H3. Against this, what do you do to get out of book? I like this, this is fun. Trompowski mirror image. He's just trying to be funny now. But that's just a bad move. My move is not a bad move. Your move is a bad move. Now I can play h4. Probably pretty legit. I wonder if h4, e5, h5, knight h4 is a thing. Anyway, we're going to have fun finding out. I love hunting, hunting knights with my h pawn. This looks highly dubious. Highland dubious. Am I the nice I am or the mean one? <laughs> what do you think? I'm too nice. That's why my rating is 2300, because I'm like a nice guy. I give little kids draws and stuff. If I was the mean I am, I would be 2400 too. Am I supposed to take that or just play like G3? I'm beginning to think that G3 might be a better move. It's actually F E Queen G five could lead to some unforeseen complications. What's wrong with G three? We're gonna find out. Bishop F one exclaim. Black Knight's gonna run out of squares soon. Ninety six. Actually not. I mean, I probably have to take on e5. But I guess if, if c6, bishop, yeah, bishop f1 would get played. Sadly, taking this pawn feels very materialistic. No! Play! That's what happened with the guy, the mean I am. 
I offer him a draw in, in a draw and working pawning game. He's like, no, play. He upset me, my delicate psyche, with that behavior. Then I almost lost the game. Ochotnik did the same thing. Like, they're not better than me, but they think they are. So they they think they can be 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 stronger with their fake overconfidence. That's like the Anand quote we had the other day. Even if you don't really, you know, even if you're not really confident, pretend that you're confident. That's exactly what Anand said. What, what am I doing? Why am I retreating my bishop? Oh yeah, it's attacked. I knew there was a reason for this. I don't think this is the right square though. <coughs> Bishop C4 mistake. It was funny because Frolov offered me a draw in Russian. Like he knew that I speak Russian or something. I actually did study Russian. But he couldn't possibly know that. He just does that with all the girls. Um, all right, Black is playing a very provocative game here. We will do the same. They should have played queen a5 check and taken the pawn with the queen on e5. I don't understand the point of declining a draw in an equal rook hand game when there's no prize at stake. I really don't understand it. It's like, we're playing for nothing, dude. You do realize that, right? Like, it's just this, like, macho type of behavior. Like, I don't want to offer a draw when I'm worse. You know, I really think that's incorrect. But we get to the point when it's really a draw. You know, you're slightly higher rated, you're white, whatever. I'm not going to offer you a draw. But then when it's, like, really a draw, I offer a draw. And we're not playing for anything. And you're like, no, play. Like, dude... That's just ridiculous. Just like gamesmanship. I mean, if I'm ever going to play that guy again, I would never offer him a draw for the rest of my life. That's it. That's the last time I ever offer him a draw for life. I mean, okay, if it's like Rook versus Rook or something, even that he'll probably decline. I mean, the guy's a strong player. He was like 25, 45 or something, peak rating. There are not a lot of IMs going around who reach 25, 45. It's actually a tribute to him that he's obviously an honest player because any other player who reached 24, 25, 45 ALO and didn't become a GM would have like bought their title or something. You know, you got to give him credit for that. He's he's clearly like honest. There's no way like. I, I mean I don't know any other IMs who got that high and didn't get the GM title. There's got to be a few, but not too many. What is this game, man? This is just disturbing me. <sighs> I'm starting to get confused. Black is obviously kind of perverted. Perverted stylistically. Doing this. Yeah, Igor Ivanov is a good example. But Igor's life was very complicated by the fact that he was an alcoholic. And additionally, you know, probably for good reason, he basically had a spy movie like Escape from the Soviet Union. You know, I think Igor had some some excuses why maybe he didn't get the GM title. He probably was about the same, yeah. Probably reached about 25, 45, something like that. Man, I'm gonna get killed here. Black is nuts. Knight H6, Knight E6, Knight, this is ridiculous. Maybe they're trolling me.
It's possible I'm being trolled. I don't know what to, what to do. Strange position. I guess white's still better, but it's so weird that I don't even know where I am anymore. I got 20 minutes left. We got challenges. Imray's back in LVN. I wish you guys would challenge me to 5 plus 3. We don't have that much time left. We could play two games. Probably with a 7 plus 3. It's going to be tough. Twilight Zone continues. I mean, Black has to know that they're like purposely playing really weird moves to the point where it's almost insane. I feel like I'm up more than one pawn. Suddenly it's, it's looking even dangerous for white in some respect. Foolishness. I'm not sure why. Well, I do know why Igor Ivanov never became a GM because in his generation, when he immigrated to the United States, there just weren't that many tournaments where you could make GM norm. It was much harder than than today. Very few norm events in the United States. Lone Pine. I don't know Igor Ivanov's story that well. We played a couple times and I talked to him a little bit before he died, but but I'm sure he must have had at least one or two GM norms. But the problem was like today they're just dime a dozen. Sinkfield is organizing GM norm tournaments like like giving out candy. But in the old days, it was extremely hard to get a GM norm tournament organized in the United States. There were almost none. The New York Open, an occasional tournament in New York, Lone Pine, there may be like two or three tournaments a year at the most. Igor Ivanov would be easily be a grandmaster in today's world. This game is just starting to bother me. We've actually played before. I didn't know that. I think I'm getting a headache from this position. Feedback on today's opponent. I've never played him before. I think he's pretty predictable. He plays the Morales attack against the Sicilian. But I haven't, I haven't decided what I'm going to play yet. I mean, it seems like some players just kind of bash him. Like they're, they're going to work, punching the clock. But he's not a bad player. It's just that I think that he's kind of predictable. Oh yeah, he's been around here a long time. I just never played much since he came. So I've never had the occasion to play the guy. I know that he's a big-time conspiracy theorist. I, I did talk to him once. He's even... He thinks, like, 9-11, like, was, was a conspiracy. He's way beyond me, like, in conspiracy theories. Stronger than me in conspiracy theory. Probably. It probably hurts your rating when you go that far with the conspiracy theories. I don't think it's healthy. Man. 
don't want to see this position anymore. It's making me crazy. This is taking hypermodernism to an unnecessary level. Actually, can't believe. I'm almost like worse. I don't think I played this guy on my stream. I mean, maybe I played him in the, in the like hourly blitz tournament or something. I don't remember ever playing this player on the stream. But you got to be seriously demented to play such such a game. I mean, I enjoy a little bit of creativity now and then, but black has gone way over the edge. I didn't react really well. Looks like I overextended. But black has not played the best moves either. Maybe bishop e3 is better than bishop e3, of course. Just continue to make stupid moves. Though I have this. Finally, we have something. Bishop takes e5. This is like my game from yesterday. If you leave the king in the center, you can castle either way. It's very flexible. There's there's something to be said for that. It's scary, but at the same time, having the ability to castle either side or leave your king in the center, I mean, so black just tactically falls apart. I'm, I'm winning a piece here. Maybe the easier way is to play bishop takes f5. Knight f5, queen b4. Knight f5, queen b4, queen d2. Bishop d2, queen b2. So I have queen d2. And then I guess bishop a5. But it's, this has gone far enough. We only have time for one more game now. I played him here in the arena one year ago and one time on stream. Yeah. It's just like, I would lose my mind if I had to play this type of game again. <laughs> Slow motion. I think I was probably worse at some point. It just got so ridiculous. Well, I've played some Slovenian players, and like most Eastern Europeans, they're quite strong. Good chess tradition. Another tactic. Now it's my turn to get in trouble. Am I lost yet? Are we there yet, Shrek? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It just the beat goes on. We're gonna be playing this game till till noon. Bishop f4? No, you had bishop take c3. That was better. He's got a wonderful hypermodern style, just that his tactics aren't good enough. If he improved tactically, he could be vicious. Like seriously, I mean, handicapping himself with a ridiculous opening, and he still was probably better at some moment. I have no idea what's going on. I, I like got overextended. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was never worse, but I felt like I had no idea what was happening here. I mean, I just wanted to lose my mind. At this point, it says B5.3 advantage to black, for example. Just to prove my point that I had no idea what's going on. 
So here, for example, in one moment, he's actually better. I had lost, it was like I was in the woods on my way to grandmother's house and got ambushed by the wolf. I don't know where I am. I'm lost. It's like dark. It's confusing. It got too weird. I don't recognize the bread crumb, the bread crumb trail. Man, dude, weird game. All right. Imre is a subscriber. This will be their last game today. Emery Tate's favorite saying? What's that? Oh, no. He would say the woodshed. Take him back to the woodshed. Not the woods. It was the woodshed. Something about the woodshed. But maybe he said the woods, too. But whenever I was around him, he was making scary quotes about the woodshed. But I think that's an old quote, actually. If you want to investigate that chess lover. I have the feeling that it's an old quote that Tate is referencing. Um, was referencing that was commonplace. He was well read. And um, despite being totally neurotic, Emery Tate was pretty well educated, self-educated and um, reading constantly. But I'm pretty sure taking him back to the woodshed was, was a kind of cultural quote reference. All right, classical Sosan Sicilian here. Undefended bishop, undefended bishop. How can we undefended knight? We can go queen a5 now. That's always an option. Queen a5 is always bad, though. Not really. Queen a5 may not be that bad here. Knight. All right, what does he do? Bishop d2, knight b5. Bishop f6, g takes f6, knight b5. I'll go back to d8. Then he has queen h5, a6. It's a game. I doubt this is the best move, but I'm tired and I, I think it looks fun. Well, I mean, a lot of strong players lost against Emery. You know, some of them beat him in 12 moves too. It was sort of, you don't know what you're going to get. Maybe depending on how drunk he was or usually not, but. And once in a while he would punch out a grandmaster, but he could just as easily lose in 10 moves doing some kind of eccentric insanity. He just dropped a piece. That's my favorite trick. Once when I was, once when I was uh, 1700, I dropped the, the piece in the Cambridge Springs trap that way. Um, fake you out with queen a5. I had him in the woods, man. So what's the best move here? I, I would probably play bishop takes f6. The problem with this is knight db5, I can play knight takes e4. And I don't really see a move. There is b4, but I doubt that's good. So I would just play bishop f6. There is one game. Maybe Blobix knows Mr. Santo Roman. He also played queen a5. Great minds think alike. Is queen a5 correct? Like, I always joke that it's always bad. It probably is bad here, too. Bishop b7, all these sound moves. Queen b6. All right, let's see the engine. Turn it on. Yeah, so he's supposed to play bishop f6. G takes f6. Well, it's just a position. Knight b3 is best. Okay. 
I mean, to me, it looks like kind of a normal rouser. Although if white gets in queen h5, Emery himself would be probably be happy with this. They should have glued down one of his favorite pawns, <laughs> Glovix. That was a story that Jinji tried to cure Walter Brown of his habitual time pressure by gluing down his Nidorf pawn. I'm not sure if it's true or he made it up. All right, guys, I got to go get some preparation for today's game. I will be back on Friday, same time, same station. Thanks to everybody for, for tuning in. And um, next week, we'll be back to the usual schedule. But we're playing until Sunday through Sunday. Sunday, when I do the simul, we'll be finished uh, our active over the board chess for a little while. Um, again, thanks for having Panda and myself. Friday stream, same thing, two hours in the morning at 10 a.m. And then a Sunday simul after my, my tournament games are completed. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.